Hello and welcome to part three of Wall Street Preps tutorial on how to build an LBO model and analyze and determine whether an LBO is even feasible. Of course, we're uh, doing a hypothetical LBO over this fictitious company, XYZ. And in the first two videos, we discussed XYZ is currently doing, uh, in terms of uh, financially, uh, six billion in revenue, 2.4 billion in EBITDA. We are assuming for our purposes of our analysis, we're going to exit we're going to acquire L company XYZ and we're going to exit in 2016 and we're going to sell it for six and a half times the EBITDA in 2016. We're the financial sponsors and we require an annual return of 25%. That's our IRR. So we built up some ab abbreviated income statement and cash flow statement information as well as an abbreviated balance sheet, uh, just cash and debt. So we have our debt schedule again. We're going to borrow $14.4 billion to acquire this company. We're going to have to pay down a billion each year. That's one, one of our assumptions. And any excess cash we generate throughout the year, uh, we can use to pay down uh, debt as well, to pay it down at a faster rate. So we discussed all that in videos one and two. Now let's answer these following six questions. Uh, first one's asking, what is the implied enterprise value in the next year? Of course, we're exiting in 2016, and we're going to sell the company for six times it's 26, or six and a half times rather, it's 2016 EBITDA. Okay, that's our assumption. So those are six and a half times, and we're going to multiply that against the projected EBITDA in 2016 of about 3.5 billion. That's our enterprise value in 2016. Of course, to calculate equity value in the exit year, we take our enterprise value and we subtract out our projected net debt in that year. Our projected net debt in 2016 is almost $7.8 billion, basically $7.8 billion. So we take enterprise value, uh, we sell the company for our enterprise value, we get the proceeds, we use it to retire the net debt in our exit year. And of course, we, the financial sponsors, uh, get to keep the equity. Again, just like buying a house. Uh, you pay down the debt over time, you sell your house, you get cash. If you have any debt remaining, you take those proceeds, you pay down, you pay off your debt, and then you get to keep whatever's left over. Same exact mechanics in an LBO. So we're going to receive $14.8 billion in four years. Again, we're buying the company in 2012. We're exiting in 2016. That's in four years. So what is the maximum amount that we can invest in this company today and still hit that 25% IRR? Well, all we need to do is a simple present value calculation. We're receiving 14.8 in four years, that's our projection, our assumptions. We're gonna discount that back at our required rate of return, 25%. And again, that 14.8 comes in four years. Because we're acquiring the company in 2012, exiting in 2016. So the maximum that we can put in as equity investors, we have to put in some equity uh, in addition to borrowing debt when we, when we do an LBO. The maximum we can put in is a little less than 6.1 billion today. Okay. If we put in a little bit more, of course, our returns will suffer. We won't hit that 25% return target. If we can put in less, of course, our returns can go up. By putting in less, maybe we can, uh, we, we'd have to borrow more from, from somewhere. But the maximum we can put in today, again, is a little less than $6.1 billion uh, using the 25% IRR. That's how we answer those first three questions. Now, the second three, basically, we want to know how much money do we have today to buy the company's equity, and pay off its debt. How much money do we have to play with today? We can put in 6.1 billion of our own cash as equity. And from an earlier video, we determined that we were going to borrow 14.4 billion. So the equity we put in plus the 14.4 that we borrow. We can put in nearly $20.5 billion. That's how much money we have today, again, to acquire the company and pay off its debt. So this is basically an enterprise value debt plus equity, our, our kind of quick enterprise value calculation, market cap plus net debt. This is uh, another way of calculating enterprise value. That's what we're asking for this second question number one. To move from this enterprise value, uh, we want to find out what the maximum, the highest purchase price we can offer for XYZ shares today. We have $20.5 billion to play with to acquire the company, so we're going to buy it we're going to pay off its current debt. This company currently has $600 million on its books. But, of course, when we buy the company, we get its 
100 million in cash that it has on its balance sheet. So we're going to subtract out the net debt, again, just like enterprise value. If you have enterprise value and you have net debt, you subtract the two, you're left with equity value. This 20 and a half billion is enterprise value, less net debt. We'll divide by shares outstanding. We have 500 million shares outstanding. And the highest price that we can offer on a per share basis for this company's equity is almost $40 per share. Again, I'm just taking enterprise value, less net debt. Of course, our implied enterprise value, the cash we have available today to acquire the company, to acquire its equity and pay off its debt. Again, similar to enterprise value. So I'm taking those total funds. I'm going to pay off the $600 million in debt, but I get the $100 million in cash that XYZ currently has on its books. So net those two together, that's net debt. So I subtract its net debt. I divide by shares outstanding, and I can offer $40 per share, almost. Now, given what the company is currently trading at, is this possible? XYZ is currently trading at $30. We can offer $40. And, of course, when you buy a company, you have to offer some kind of premium. When you, when you acquire control, uh, you have to offer a control premium. So we can calculate and see what that, that premium is. 33% premium. Pretty healthy premium. So yes, it does appear that based on our analysis, that this is a, a possible LBO candidate. We can offer up to $40 per share for its equity and still hit all of our return requirements. Of course, this LBO is based on projected financial statement data with revenue growth and EBITDA margins, as well as paying down our debt over time with any excess cash flows we generate. But it does appear that this is a feasible LBO candidate. And now congratulations. After viewing this video, you are now one of the masters of the finance universe. You have just completed a quick LBO model. Again, conceptually, it's very similar to buying a house. You take on debt, you pay down that debt over time, you sell your house, and you get to keep whatever's left over. So I hope you enjoyed it. Look for more uh, videos like this at wallstreetprep.com.